Today we're going to learn about OpenBSD, an ultra-secure Unix-like operating system, and how to install a virtual machine of it onto our computers, on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. OpenBSD is an extremely secure Unix-like operating system, which means it's not exactly Linux, but it uses Unix, so you can use many bash tools that you're already familiar with. Typically, OpenBSD is used as server software, but it can be used as a normal desktop environment. It is developed by Berkeley Software Distributions, which has also developed tools such as OpenSSH, which has seen wide popularity. OpenBSD is so popular just because it is extremely secure. It uses features such as extensive privilege, escal er, extensive privilege separation and extensive use of cryptography to make sure it's one of the most secure operating systems that you can use today. However, it is not the most user-friendly to use, which is why we're going to be installing it as a virtual machine on a normal desktop environment instead of using it as a default operating system on a computer. In order to follow this tutorial, all you're going to need is a computer with Oracle VirtualBox installed onto it. If you have any problems with this, with this tutorial, you can check out the article, which is linked in the description. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually download the OpenBSD ISO file. So to do that, you can go ahead and navigate to the Nullby article linked in the description, and you can scroll down, and the link to the um, FTP mirrors is right here. So you can go ahead and choose a location near to you, but I'm just going to go ahead and use the, cloud, the Cloudflare um, server. And then we're going to install the newest version of OpenBSD, which is 6.7. And then we're going to want to download the .iso file which is going to be in the AMD64 folder, and we're going to download install67.iso. We're going to go ahead and save that file to somewhere we can access it to later. And then now we can go ahead and open Oracle VirtualBox. If you don't have VirtualBox, I think you can install it with APT. And once you have it, you can go ahead and create a new VirtualBox. And we're going to call it Open PST. It should recognize that OpenBSD as a operating system automatically and reconfigure the stuff. And we can configure how much RAM will be allocated to this virtual machine. About one gigabyte should be enough, but you can create more. This computer only has eight gigabytes of RAM on it, so I'm gonna limit how much it can be used. And then we're gonna create a virtual hard disk now. We're gonna make sure that we select VDI and we're gonna select dynamically allocated uh, memory hard drive space on the hard disk just because it's simpler. You can do fixed size, but it is a little more complicated and 16 gigabytes is more than enough for um, the stuff that I'll be doing on OpenBSD. So we're gonna go ahead and create it. And then now that, we're made, that, we, that we've made sure the ISO file is finished downloading, we can see that it's in our downloads folder. So we can go to VirtualBox and start it. And we're gonna have to select the uh, ISO image. So we're gonna have to add um, from our downloads, this install 67.iso, and we're gonna start it from there. And let's scale this up. And as you can see, OpenBSD has started booting. It's gonna take a couple seconds. We're gonna type an I to install OpenBSD. We're gonna specify our keyboard layout. I'm just gonna do US, but if you wanted to see more options, you can type in question mark. So they have stuff like Dvorak um, in French and different languages. But like I said earlier, I'm just gonna do the default US. Um, now we're gonna specify our system host name. I'm just gonna call it OpenBSD to keep things simple. We're gonna use the default network interface. DH DHCP by default. Most of these settings we can leave as default. I'm not gonna use IPv6, I'm just gonna use IPv4. That's fine. And then we're gonna enter a password, so make sure you do a secure password. And it's not that, um, well not echo, it just means it's not gonna print out back to you. We're gonna turn that on. And we're gonna, um, this X Windows system is gonna make things, so we're gonna install this X Windows system because it's gonna make things a, a little bit easier to install a different graphical interface later. So we're just gonna put yes for that. Now we can set up a lower privilege user and this makes things a little secure. So not everything is done as root user. Let me go ahead and get rid of that as well. It's distracting. And so oops, we'll call our user null, null fight, and we're gonna make a password we're not gonna allow root login over SSH because remember we want this to be a very secure lockdown operating system. Now it's gonna ask what time zone we're in and we can see the full list. So I'm gonna type in question mark and then we're gonna go to America and we'll see all the lists. I am in, I'm in Los Angeles. 
we're going to use the default disk, which is also the only available disk. And for this, we're going to select the whole disk, just might as well. And we're going to auto format it. And depending on the speed of your hard drive, if you're using SSD, this might take a while, but I'm using SSD, so that was pretty fast. So now we're going to install the sets. We're actually going to install it from HTTP because that makes installing packages a little later much, much simpler. So we're going to go ahead and select HTTP and we're not going to set up a proxy server. And we're going to um, now we have to select the HTTP server to install the sets from. So let's go ahead and see the options by typing in question mark. And I'm just going to use the first one. So. So now we're going to install the sets. We're actually going to select HTTP because that makes installing packages a little bit simpler down the road. We're not going to set up a proxy server and we're going to use the host mirrors.sonic.net. That's a perfectly fine directory. As we can see, everything is X, so that's perfect. If one of these is not selected, you can just type in all and that should take care of it. But because they're all already selected, I'm going to just hit done and it's going to take a couple minutes to download. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it for a second. Now that that went ahead and finished downloading, we can just hit enter. Um, time appears wrong, but it's not that important. And then now all we have to do is reboot it. As you can see, it brought us back here to this installation menu, which is not where we really want to end up. So there's a simple way to fix this. So we can go ahead and power off the virtual machine. And then if we go to OpenBSD, if we go to the settings, go to storage, and if we right click and remove this ISO image as a, a attachment, and then if we restart the virtual machine, it should take us into the boot page. So I'm gonna give it a second to boot up. So now if you get to this page, you should know that everything worked properly. So let's go ahead and boot into the, I'm just gonna go capture our mouse controls. Let's go ahead and boot into the lower privileged user that we set up earlier with the username null. And we're in. And as you can see, this is the XFCE, or not the XFCE, this is the um, OpenBSD desktop environment, which is very, very basic and bare bones. And it's kind of weird at first, but you can see this little three by three grid in the, in the bottom right. And these act as like different virtual desktops. So if you hold the cursor up or down, so I can go ahead and open a new terminal window here. Oh, that's opening that one. So if I left click and I can open a X term here and this terminal is over here. And so now I'm going to show you guys how to install like a package such as Nano. So to do that, all you have to do is open this terminal window package underscore add tack V for a verbose response and then Nano. It's going to take a couple seconds to download. And as you can see, now we have the Nano text editor on OpenBSD, which should make things a little bit more familiar. But as you can see, it's a very old looking user interface, but you can, if you check out the article in the description, there is instructions how to install the XFCE user interface, which is what Kali Linux uses now. So it feels a lot more modern. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP ZAP, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. So we just saw a basic installation of OpenBSD and some very basic functionality about how to use the desktop environment. If you want to learn some more about OpenBSD, you can check out the Nullby article, which is linked in the description, which goes into detail about how to install in the XFCE desktop environment, or you can check out openbsd.org and learn more from other OpenBSD users. Again, if you have any problems with this tutorial, check out the article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for a future video, hit me up at Twitter at Nick Godshell. Thanks you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.